Hi, my name is Jason Gilmore and I am Dream Factory's CTO. Over the course of the next few minutes, I'll show you how to create a fully functional, fully documented, and secure REST API for a MySQL database. You're currently looking at the Web Administration Console, which is available to all versions of the Dream Factory platform. And specifically, you're looking at our demo server, which we use for demos such as this. And for that reason, you can see that we've already configured a wide array of demonstrations, including uh, Dream Factory's ability to integrate with MongoDB, with Salesforce, with the Cassandra database, with MemSQL, with IBM DB2, and so on. Dream Factory can also create completely custom scripted services using a number of scripting engines including PHP and Python and furthermore it can integrate with third-party services such as IBM Maximo or message brokers such as Cloud MQTT. So what I'm going to do in this demonstration is create an entirely new API which connects to a MySQL database that is hosted on Amazon RDS. In order to do so, I've clicked on the Services tab, and next I'll click on the Create button. And it's here you'll find a drop-down in which you can select the service type for which you would like to create a REST API. And as I mentioned previously, we're going to generate a REST API for a MySQL database so I'll go to database and you can see that Dream Factory supports 18 different database solutions including all of the most common relational databases such as MySQL, Oracle, Postgres and Microsoft SQL Server and additionally Dream Factory supports many of the most common NoSQL databases including for example CouchDB and MongoDB now again for the purposes of this demonstration I'm going to generate a MySQL API so I'll choose MySQL now and we're taken to the configuration wizard used to generate the API and from here on out it's important to keep in mind that regardless of the type of database you choose this process is going to be the same so whether you're interested in creating a MySQL API or a Microsoft SQL Server API or an Oracle API, what I demonstrate here is going to apply identically regardless of the database solution desired. So I'll begin things by adding a name to our API. And this name is important because it's going to form part of the URL structure created for this particular API. So what you want to do is you want to make it all lowercase and all one word. So I'll just go ahead and choose demo for this purpose. And then I'll set a label and a description. Now the label and the description are just used for referential purposes within the web administration interface. So you're free to choose anything you please. I'll leave it set to active because we're going to use this API immediately upon configuring it and next I will click the config tab and it's here where you're going to specify your connection credentials just like you would when connecting a database to any other application you're going to provide the host the port number database username etc so what I'll do now is go to another screen and I'm going to grab my credentials beginning with the host and as I mentioned a moment ago this particular MySQL instance is running on Amazon RDS MySQL's default port number is 3306 our database is called employees the username is Dream Factory Demo and then there's a very long password which I will copy and paste from the other window at this point you're done these are the required parameters for MySQL now when you're using another database such as Oracle or SQL Server you're probably going to want to supply the schema 
And there are other optional parameters at your disposal as well, including character set definition. You can specify driver options or driver attributes to modify the behavior of the underlying driver. You can cap the maximum number of records. You can cache your data sets for a period of time defined in minutes. However, I'm just going to leave all of that unused for now and just move forward after having set these five fields. I'll press Save. And once I've done so, you'll see up top that Dream Factory indicates the service has been saved successfully. Now that's kind of an understatement because what Dream Factory just did in a matter of seconds really would typically take a development team weeks if not frankly months to complete. And that is because Dream Factory configured a full-fledged REST API. It created documentation for that API. It secured the API, and because we left that active checkbox set during the configuration process, it deployed that API. So let's go ahead and take a look at the documentation just to get a feel for what endpoints have been made available. To do so, I'll click on the API Docs tab located at the top of the screen. And here you'll find all of the documentation that has been generated for your APIs. And if I scroll down, I come across the new demo API documentation found here. It's part of the database group, and it's specifically a MySQL API. I'll go ahead and click on that and you're presented with a list of all of the endpoints that have been generated for this API. At the top you'll find endpoints for executing stored functions and stored procedures. Next you'll find endpoints for viewing and manipulating the schema. Now of course I always like to point out that these endpoints are indeed generated however they might not be functional depending upon the privileges associated with the user you used when configuring the connection to that database. So if that particular user does not possess privileges to, for example, retrieve a da table definition or d drop a table, then of course that's not going to be possible through Dream Factory. So Dream Factory is always going to rely upon that connecting user to provide a base level of privileges, which then may or may not be made available through these API endpoints. So I always just like to point that out. And I'll continue scrolling down to what are typically the most commonly used endpoints for Dream Factory users, and those are the CRUD endpoints. Create, Retrieve, Update, and Delete. So for example, if I click on the retrieve one or more records endpoint and then click on try it out because all of this documentation is interactive. So we're not just reviewing documentation. You can actually use the documentation to interact with that API and learn more about how it works without necessarily writing code first. So I've clicked try it out. That has enabled all of these parameter fields here and it's worth noting that the Dream Factory REST API allows you to carry out any conceivable task that you would otherwise carry out using a SQL statement. Meaning you can use the API to select specific fields for return, to join tables together, to filter, so this would be the WHERE clause within a SQL statement, to limit to offset, to order, to group, to count. Anything you can do with a SQL statement, you can do with the Dream Factory API as well. So what I'll do just for this initial example is I'll scroll all the way down to table name. And there's a table name in this database called employees. So what we're going to do is we're just going to retrieve all of the records. I'll press execute, scroll down, and you'll see 
that a response body has been returned in JSON format. Dream Factory also supports XML. All you have to do is pass along a parameter within the URL. It was successful, so we're seeing a 200 status code. And finally, here, note that this is the URI structure for this API. And there's the demo that I referred to earlier when we, when we identified a name for this particular API. So that could be your company name, it, it could be anything. Just keep in mind that that name is going to form part of the URL. So it's kind of like a namespace. If I scroll up just as one additional example and limit results to two and scroll back down, I'll press execute again. Sure enough, you'll see that two records have been returned. And I don't think that's really a surprise. But what's more important from a documentation standpoint is that you now see what is required from a parameter standpoint, what you need to do in order to modify that URL request in order to achieve that desired outcome. So the documentation provides a really great way to become familiar with the API without having to write a bunch of code and, and quite likely getting frustrated along the way. So with that demonstration complete, I'd like to show you one more example, but this time we will do that from outside of Dream Factory. I've now left the Dream Factory web administration interface and entered a desktop tool called Insomnia. Now Insomnia is just an HTTP client which you can use to test APIs and interact with them. If you haven't heard of Insomnia before, you might have heard of Postman for example. So Insomnia and Postman are just both very useful tools which you can use to interact with these APIs. And I wanted to show you one last example from outside of the Dream Factory documentation because in doing so, I can show you a feature of the platform that isn't so obvious when we're, when we're using that interactive documentation. So if you have a look up top, you'll notice that this URL is the very same URL we use to retrieve all employees from the employees table, or all records. And if I press send, sure enough, those records are returned. However, it's much more clear here to see that Dream Factory also requires an API key at minimum to be passed along with each request. So in Insomnia there's a great feature where you can create environment variables and then use those variables in place of actual strings which what that's what I've done here that's why you see API key in purple. However keep in mind that that variable contains a very long random string of characters which is used for the API key. That API key is generated and managed within your Dream Factory instance and you can create one API key for an API or you can create many APIs. That's entirely up to you. But what I wanted to demonstrate is if we do not provide that API key, so I've, I've unchecked that option, and press send, a 400 status code is returned along with a message about a missing API key. So just keep in mind that at a minimum that's required. And if you want to enforce additional security constraints, Dream Factory also supports the ability to authenticate users using LDAP, Active Directory, single sign-on, and other solutions as well. So Hopefully this quick demonstration gave you an overview of Dream Factory's capabilities, showing you not only how quickly it can generate APIs, but also how it documents and secures them. And with that, I'll end the demonstration and invite you to have a look at some of our other videos found over on YouTube.